Hi everybody, it's Nat from Studio Hacks here and in this video I'm going to show you the correct way to use effects in Ableton Live 10. And this video is for Josh in Fentry Gully, one of my students. Um, Josh recently sent me uh, a session he was working on and I noticed uh, something with the effects that heaps and heaps of new producers do. And I want to show you, uh, it's very, very common. And this is, uh, this is a mistake I made early on. So basically it's really to do with reverb and delay. Um, so you're working on a song, you have a sound and you want to put some reverb on it. So let me just grab a sound here. I'm just going to search under the samples. I'll just grab a snare, any snare. I'm going to drag this into an audio track. So we've got, we've got a sound. Now this is this is what the mind does in a in a new producer. They go, I want to put reverb on that snare. So I'm going to go over to the left hand side to the audio effects and I'm going to find a reverb. There's the reverb and you can hit this little uh, arrow here to get all the different uh, reverb presets if you want. There's special these uh, strange ones and plate reverbs and things like this. And then you've got the standard room and hall. So let's just grab a hall, like a church or something. This is what you do. You grab it and you put it on the track. It seems quite logical, but there's a big problem with this. Um, because when you put a, well, there's two big problems. The first one is that you have a dial down the bottom here that has dry and wet. So when you have completely dry, there is no effect at all. And when you have completely wet, you are only hearing the effect and none of the original transient. So a lot of people go, oh, I just want a little bit of reverb. So they dial that up. I'll pop a little bit more on. Now here's the problem. As you dial this away from dry and towards wet, you are reducing the volume of the original sound, the original transient. So you're making it softer and you're losing the front end of that transient and you're bluntening that and you're washing it out. You're making it more less punchy and more washy. And that will really start to um, make your mix muddy and um, not sound very good at all. The other problem is uh, when you start to get lots and lots of tracks and you want reverb on all your different tracks and just here you start uh, doing if you repeat that same process. So let's go over to the audio effects and you start putting reverb plugins on all these tracks. Every time you put a plugin on a track, it's going to start to use up your computer power, the CPU. And you can see up in the top right corner uh, when you hit play, there's a little meter here and that is telling you how much of your CPU is being used and reverb plugins are notoriously thirsty on your CPU. So you will start to really slow down your whole mix and then you'll start experiencing audio dropouts because you've got a reverb plugin on every single track. So I'm going to delete these reverb plugins and I'm going to show you the proper way to use reverb and or any effect. Um, and it's already built in to Ableton Live. All you have to do Let's just mute all these other channels and get our original snare. All you have to do is use this little dial here. This is the effects track, the effects bus. We've got uh, A and B and they give you two effects uh, tracks when you create a new session in Ableton Live straight off the bat. You'll see down the bottom here, we've got reverb A and they give you a delay. So the correct way is to just dial up this first one here, which will send audio from this snare track and run it through the effects track where you'll see that the dry and wet is all the way up. And then that, that now separates the audio, which is nice and clean and untouched. And then you're sending some of that to this effects track. So you're now just hearing that effect on top. And then you can send multiple tracks to that same reverb plugin and you've got reverb on all your tracks and you're only using one reverb plugin. So you're saving all of your CPU power for your software instruments or whatever else you're doing. You can create extra effects tracks really simply by going to the create menu and uh, you go insert return track. You can also change the reverb 
on the standard first track there. And you'll see when I created a third track, we now have a third little, uh, you just click and, and drag up to increase that and down on your mouse to, to decrease that. If I switch over to the mixer view by hitting tab or clicking this little button here, um, you'll see that those, you can access those same send, you know, effects sends here now with a dial. That's A, B, and C. So you can have multiple reverbs and delays. So let's say we wanted a little bit of reverb and a little bit of delay, and we wanted to make it our own reverb. So let's go down to this C return that we've just created. We're going to need to put a, a reverb plugin on that track. So let's find a reverb uh, from our audio effects. And you can put third party plugins here. If you've got something like the wave suite, like I do, you can put, put your own reverb. So let's get a nice snare reverb. And I think there's a preset for snare, like a room somewhere here. There's a snare room there. Let's pop that snare room plug in there. And you'll notice you always have it up to 100% on the dry and wet when you're using an effects track. So now let's send some audio from this snare track down to that return track. It's a nice room sound. It's a nice short tail. Just sounds like you're in a room. So as a general rule, when you're producing music in any digital audio workstation, never drag your audio plugins directly onto a track when you want to use delay and reverb effects. Always use a effects bus or an effects track um, or a send. Those are all kind of terms for the same uh, idea where you are sending audio from a track and then separating that audio from the effect itself and you have lots of control because you can just dial this up and down and you save heaps of CPU power. So that is the correct way to use effects in Ableton Live 10. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you find this content uh, useful, please do subscribe and like. It really helps me out growing the channel and continuing to make this content for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.